Hi and welcome to Online Appliance Tech. Today we're working on an LG dryer and in this video we're going to show you how to take the dryer apart and check all parts that can cause a dryer not to heat or turn on. So the first thing you want to do is wedge the front of the dryer with some type of plastic so you can see exactly where the clip is. Once you locate the clip you'll take a flathead screwdriver and press in. Once you press in with the flathead, it's good to grab the side and kind of press in and pry upwards. And this is the exact same thing you would do on the right hand side. Sometime to get leverage, you'll grab behind the dryer and press in. Press in and pry up. So these are two clips that you press in, just to give you a better view. So open up the lid and just kind of pull the dryer forward enough so the lid stays open on its own. Disconnect the door switch just by pulling the harness out and then you're going to remove the two Phillips screws, one on the left, one on the right. Okay, so once you move, remove the two Phillips screws, you want to move the dryer into position, close the lid, into a position where you can open the front door fully. This way you can access all the screws you have to remove to take the front door off. So once you get in position, open the door and you want to remove these Phillips screws. There should be a total of six. There's one, two, two at the bottom, not at the very bottom. The very two at the very, very bottom you do not remove. Just the ones you see on this video. So it should be a total of six. Okay, so now since we have all the screws removed, you'll open the lid and the door will just kind of fall forward, so be careful. And then you'll just lift the door straight up once you lean it forward towards you. There's three plastic clips at the bottom of the door that connects to the door, as you'll see. So this is how we're going to remove the tub support in the blower housing. There's two screws there. there. Those two screws are unique and you have the two on the right and two on the left. Okay, so once you remove these screws, remove the filter and just pull the blower housing straight off. And just sometimes you can turn the blower just to make sure there's nothing caught up in there. If you do have a lot of lint caught in your blower housing, just I recommend cleaning that. That will help you dry, dry your clothes faster and more efficient. So this front housing, you would basically just slip straight up and out. As you can see, it's clipped into the main housing of the dryer. And you'll disconnect the dryer sensor. As you can see, it's still connected to my front housing. And 
another thing you would want to do is check your wheels. If these wheels are locked up, this can prevent the drum from rotating at the correct speed and cause the heat not to exit the dryer correctly. Okay, let's remove the belt from the either pulley. Let me see if I can get a good angle. It's a tight spot. So, what you want to do is pull the pulley back and then you're going to remove the belt from the motor pulley and from the either pulley but the first thing you will remove it from is the motor pulley this is from with one hand so it's a little bit more complicated to do so once that's done you're going to remove the front remove the belt then you'll open up the top lid and slide the drum straight out and put it somewhere safe and also check the back wheels. Just make sure they're not locked up. If they're locked up, you must replace them. So let's check all the components and let me explain to you what they do. So this is ohms and when you have continuity is basically 0, 0.0 to 0 0.5. So this is the motor thermostat. If this reads open line, which this is a good one, but if it is open, this will cause the dryer not to start. So if you press the start button, the dryer will just basically do nothing, just make a click, and that's the relay from the main control board. So that's only if the dryer does not start. Uh, start. and this is the flame sensor. This should read 0.0, .0 to 0 0.5. Um, my multimeter is real sensitive so that's why it's kind of jumping all over the place but this is good and that will uh, not allow the dryer to heat. Same thing, this is the igniter. They should read anywhere from 150 to 200 ohms and this is also a, a problem if it is bad open line and replace it or if it's extremely white it means it's a weak igniter that, that will also cause the dryer not to heat so this is the belt and it has a safety switch so say if your belt broke this either pulley would drop down and allow this switch to have or be basically an open circuit and your dryer will not start also. And here's the thermal fuse. This is a common problem when your dryer will not heat. It's called a reset button, a reset thermal fuse. There's many names. So anyway, if you check with a multimeter before you press the button in, it should, if it reads 0 0.3 before you press the button, that means that's not your problem. Or if you just press it with your finger and it clicks in, that means it did trip and it will heat. But if you take the dryer to this point and apart, you might as well replace it because eventually they get weak and they're just they just need to be replaced. Here's another high limit fuse, 0 0.3. This is good. This fuse will also cause your dryer not to heat. So if you do have a defective part for this dryer, I will leave part numbers in the description below. Basically all LG dryers when it comes to these parts are the same except the motor. So to put the machine back together, just slide the drum back into place. What I recommend is connecting the felt or kind of rotate the drum to the bottom wheels first and then press towards the drum or towards the back housing and rotate and then you'll just basically place the belt over the drum make sure that the belt is not twisted if the belt is twisted you'll start the machine and then the belt will come off and you have to take the machine off again so I recommend once you put the belt on turn the drum make sure it's not twisted so let's reinstall the belt to the either pulley You'll come over the either pulley, you'll connect it to the motor pulley first, 
but you got to make sure you come over the other pulley. So basically over the other pulley, pull back and connect to the motor pulley, if that makes sense. As you can see here, I'm just checking to make sure the drum or the belt is not twisted. So everything does look good, no twists, so I'm good to go. So now we're going to connect the front drum support housing. Same thing, I like to connect the bottom wheels under the bottom drum first. So basically underhook the felt with the wheels and then pull the drum up with the support and connect to the top two clips that connect the housing first. So just kind of clip them in and press down. Um, and then you'll turn the drum as you hold the support down, that'll kind of get everything into place if you, as you can see it's clipped in and connect your bottom clips to the housing and just make sure that's cleaned out slide that up into the housing drum housing once you kind of get everything lined up just start putting all the screws back in where they go at this point it's pretty cut and dry however the two screws for the blower housing are different than the to go support housing for the drum they're a little different looking There's only two I recommend just rotating the drum clockwise. Make sure there's no type of resistance or something that you connected wrong. If everything's smooth, just put your filter back into place. Reconnect your dryer sensor. And next we'll just install this door. Like I said, there's three clips at the bottom, the white plastic clips that kind of go into place at the door. As you can see, exactly the same. So just slide straight down and press the door forward and it'll click into place at the top of the dryer. There's like two clips as you'll see. So once I press the dryer door in, I'll line it up with the screw. And you'll put the other screw in exactly the same way, the same way you took it apart. And then make sure you connect your door switch. So yeah, just to connect the door switch harness. Just click it into place. And you're gonna lay your lid down and just press down on both sides and it'll clip right into place. So now we have to reconnect the screws to the front door. I recommend when you install these screws, just make sure you're, if you do have a drill, make sure it's straight in, not sideways. You could uh, strip out the hole. That's why it's good to also have the door wide open so you can get that straight angle. There we go.
Well, I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, just leave in the comments below. And feel free to like and subscribe for more future tips and videos and support. Thank you and have a good day.